much for taking the time out as always. Let's shift focus and talk about what's happening within the pharma industry. And uh, the pharma industry is now going to become or all set to become a hundred billion dollar industry. One pharma steps uh, to boost pharma, increasing market share in pharma. These are all ponderable questions and points. Uh, so let's welcome on board Anthony Prashant, partner at Deloitte India, to answer some of his observations on what's happening within the pharma basket. Uh, Anthony, hi, morning. Good to have you on the show. Uh, you've written a recent report about your farm, you know, the pharma industry. You say that it has the size and capability to grow up to $100 billion. What is needed to really scale up to that level? To give you a context before I get into the details of how we would reach this 100 billion, uh, if you look at the global pharma industry, it's around 1.3 trillion US dollars. And, uh, and within that, uh, Genrix is around 270 billion dollars. And India accounts for 3% of the global pharma sector, which is at 40 billion today. And, uh, and we are a very large exporting uh, organization, uh, you know, uh, close to 19, 20 billion of our uh, uh, in the industry's uh, output is exported and 40% 40, 40 of the exports is predominantly going to the U.S. and some to U.K. and other, and other countries like South Africa. Now, if you look at um, the patents that would expire over the next uh, four to five years, roughly around uh, uh, $200 billion of generics would be coming into the market, which therefore makes the global generics market move from $270 billion to $450 billion. And that's a significant opportunity for the India market because we are a large uh, exporting uh, industry. Now, if we need, if you look at uh, accelerating the journey, and when we are at 11% of the Gendrix uh, uh, market, and given the, uh, our ex exposure to exports, and if we accelerate the journey to at least achieve 17% of the demand, then there is a significant opportunity for us to uh, achieve for the formulation business of 30 billion going to 75 billion and on top which will add another 8 to 10 billion so there is a clear path market and the number of patents that are going to expire in the next the pharmacy of the world, literally. Uh, how is it that you think one uh, we can increase the Indian market share in the global pharma industry? We don't need to invest more in various platforms like complex drugs, biotechs, etc., to try and scale up the market share. Okay, let me put it this way. How, how do we achieve this? Like you asked, how do you achieve this uh, 100 billion mark? And again, uh, before I... Uh, put in this, the, what strategy we should adopt uh, into perspective. If you look at uh, uh, what our industry has been predominantly excelling is in manufacturing low-cost generic drugs. And uh, recently, our, the large Indian pharma companies have been focusing on uh, diversifying. They move moving into injectables, biosimilars, and other uh, uh, specialty products as well. And even from an infrastructure perspective, um, outside the U.S., the largest number of U.S. FDA-approved sites are in India. And, uh, and that's a very a big uh, advantage for uh, the industry. And also, if you take the industry in perspective, there is a significant concentration among the companies. 25 companies contribute to 85% of the total industry output. And there is a long tail. There's a significant portion. There are around 3,000 pharma companies, in India, which range from uh, 10, 10 crores to 100 crores, and of course, varying size. Therefore, this would involve a two-pronged strategy for us to achieve this 100 billion uh, mark. One is how do we enable the medium and the large Indian pharma companies to accelerate the growth and, and to cater to the uh, uh, demand that is going to come in in the next four to five years. And the second part is how do we attract the top 20 global companies into India to set up operations here. And, uh, and again, here, if you look at there's a there's a big concentration. We spoke about the size of the industry, you know, 1.3 trillion, and 20 global companies contribute to roughly 650 billion. So, it's, but their presence in India is very uh, uh, limited. So, how do we bring those companies into India 
looking at india for india and india for global so that's the uh, strategy that we need to So, Anthony, you know the likes of the MNCs, GSK, Pfizer, Novartis—they've been here for many years. Are them to manufacture for exports in India? For, for exports, yes. Because our our our, in, our uh, domestic market is today around 18 billion, and as it grows, it could reach anywhere between uh, 25 to 30 billion. But the larger opportunity is there in the exports uh, out of that 100 billion. So how do they? And, and that's where, right? Which is where we need to look at the larger ecosystem uh, that we have. For example, uh, how do we look at creating clusters or industrial parks where you have plug-and-play facilities for manufacturing at a global scale? How do we simplify regulatory mechanisms, set up the quality standards at par with the global best practices, and also create very transparent, you know, fiscal support mechanisms? You know, when I spoke about this 3,000 pharma companies, which are in the, uh, uh, you know, the small and medium care segment we need to look at setting up this one from our platform uh, where we will use technology for consolidating sourcing supply chain regulatory quality approvals and and the intent is how do we aggregate all these discrete capacities that are available to individual companies and enable collaboration and alliances with large global and domestic pharma companies and we have seen that happen in the recent past right in the context of covid we saw a lot of global companies looking at india for uh, in licensing and a lot of uh, agreements that were signed up so it could either be using this uh, ecosystem that is available for for set, for setting up operations in india and looking at uh, the india uh, uh, manufacturing ecosystem for uh, global opportunities as well but but we should be but also we should keep in mind this this would involve setting up you know regulatory standards which would enable global companies consider these uh, uh, small and medium enterprises on that one form of platform for strategic partnerships jvs are looking at any uh, contract manufacturing operations so uh, how important is it to incentivize r&d across the board what are some of the hurdles for r&d in the complex drugs for biotech as well currently you know put it in 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 a in this manner for example when we spoke about building the 100 meeting the 100 billion mark and what are, and where are we where is our competitiveness and to enable those competitors what are some of the building blocks so if you look at those uh, if you look at the building blocks for being competitive as well as uh, meeting this 100 billion mark one of the big enablers or enablers is going to be the r&d capability so for example if you look at uh, uh, the biologic segment in in india it's relatively small we are off the 40 billion our output is close to 2 to 2 and a half billion dollars and uh, one of the uh, key barriers for indian companies in increasing the presence in the uh, biopharma segment is the high cost of development to develop a biosimilar the cost ranges from 100 to 150 million dollars and and when i say a biosimilar it's not the real biologic it's the generics equivalent of when you when you have a, a patent a drug and when the pay, when the patent goes away it becomes a generics the similarity when applied to a biologics when the biologics patent expand, expires it becomes a biosimilar now it, it costs anywhere between 100 and 150 million dollars to develop this uh, biosimilar and and uh, additional additionally if you look at all the clinical research initiators on innovative products by companies as well as CR, CROs they need to comply with multiple DGCI regulations and queries and therefore making the approval process complex and time consuming and, uh, and and that's where we have to be spending more time from an R&D uh, capability uh, and and every year regulatory agencies are granting approvals as well for uh, various uh, similar biologics for the treatments of multiple diseases and if we have to achieve true potential and become a global leader we need to bring in enabling policies for driving r&d in india for both the indian and global companies that we are looking at and the talent pool is available in india and also the existing infrastructure will uh, support it for example you know we spoke about Uh, the largest number of fda sites out of the us and there is a large domestic market should, that should enable this and uh, and also the focus should be is how do we develop biosimilars at a very low cost uh, so that we are we still remain uh, competitive uh, uh, in the global market because if 
we find that many con- uh, large uh, markets are moving towards generics then it becomes a very commoditized product so for, so we need to build strong capability to enable uh, create biosimilars at a much lower cost if we are able to create biosimilars at the cost of generics that will be a big competitive advantage for india all right now a lot of recent uh, incentives have also come in for the api segment do you think that perhaps uh, indian pharma needs to be more backward integrated than before very good question because uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the dimensions that most of the pharma companies have embarked on today is on building resilience in the uh, supply chain especially in uh, in uh, in making the apis or or more than apis the input materials for manufacturing the apis what we call as the key starting materials or the intermediates and 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 the reason why uh, the new schemes that have come up is to be cost competitive with china and the advantage that china has is see um, if you if you take an api facility the biggest cost element is the uh, effluent treatment plant and the common utilities so china has set up a lot of uh, huge bulk uh, parks where all these facilities are made available to companies and therefore they become cost competitive and at the same time more when you start looking at larger volumes uh, the uh, co- the utilization of assets goes up and therefore the cost as well come down and also one thing the china in the, the local chinese market itself is very big you know for the domestic consumption in china it's of 100 billion 100 and 120 billion it's whereas india is roughly around 20 billion they are six times the domestic uh, consumption of uh, uh, india now in order to ensure that we are uh, cost competitive as well as 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 well as being resilient while so the question therefore companies have started answering now is do we do we look at cost arbitrage or we look at disruption arbitrage right so how do we ensure that we have steady supplies of uh, apis at and, and at the same time we are cost competitive so and and it's in the, and also if you look at the 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 373 73 essential drugs uh, 200 of them are imported from china and this is where we need to start uh, looking at uh, the multiple schemes that the government has uh, launched so government has now come up with two schemes for pharma one is the pli scheme where if you can uh, if you are able to uh, uh, what what the scheme talks about is it gives some financial incentives uh, based on sales made by selected manufacturers for 41 products which covers uh, around the 53 uh, apis and and the incentive ranges from you know 5 to 20% based on the incremental sales so that's going to help companies in terms of uh, bridging the gap between uh, the, the chinese prices and india price to some extent but obviously uh, there would be if there would be some uh, 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 some apis where we may not be able to meet the uh, price uh, uh, competitiveness but at least this helps the indian companies to source apis from indian manufacturers because we have a large ecosystem in india for example if you take a drug like gava pentin we have the capacity which is three times the demand but we still import that uh, api from china so therefore we have the capacities now how do we ensure that we leverage those capacities build in efficiencies improve asset utilization and at the same time build in resilience uh, into the uh, industry and the second scheme with the government is now uh, has, has also come up which is the bulk truck part and it is and this this scheme is primarily may is to provide uh, easy access to uh, world class common infrastructure facilities and uh, which will be pro- lo- located in these parks where companies can come set up and make use of these uh, common uh, infrastructure facilities and this is again for a period of 5 uh, years so there so because of because we need to build resilience i think the government has come up with these schemes which should uh, help bridge uh, the the price uh, gap between china and india to some extent all right we'll leave it there thanks for joining us anthony time to take a quick break we'll be back on the other side